Men freely believe that which they desire to be true. Julius Caesar. The latest of issues to rise to public notoriety are events in Crimea, to which I have responded by yawning, and making a video because apparently people think it's going to start World War III or something. Okay, here we go. At the time of me making this video, Crimea is a territory of Ukraine. Part of the population there doesn't like the current government and are trying to leave Ukraine and be part of Russia, to which the Russian government seems to be encouraging, so to say. A lot of people support the Ukrainian government, a lot of people support the Russian government, and here in the West, neither side can be bothered to invest the time to comprehend the situation because that takes too much effort and people want to be able to pat themselves on the back for having a good moral position and think themselves intelligent without having to deal with all those extra time-consuming responsibilities like making sure the opinion is well informed or other pesky inconveniences. So in this video, I hope to inform you as to what a well-reasoned stance should be, or if you're already well aware, at least provide you some entertainment. So, let's begin by looking at both sides. We'll start with the democratic self-determination argument, this being the most common one I've encountered. The idea that an area within a country can secede from that country because a sizable portion of the population in that area want to go be part of another country. This is a position holding a disturbing amount of support and can be summed up as follows. The belief that everything works if you throw democracy at it, and a country's economy can run on rainbows, bubblegum, and My Little Pony. I've already seen far too many people suggesting that because it's allegedly what the majority of the population in the area want, that they have a right to do so due to democratic self-determination. And I will demonstrate how silly this is by the use of analogy. Imagine the following situation. A bunch of Americans leave the United States and go to France, Spain, and Argentina. The large sum of immigrants tend to congregate in a few specific territories and now outnumber the native population in each. These people view themselves as ethnically American, and that these lands in France, Spain, and Argentina respectively are not American enough and don't hold proper American values. So they vote that the United States should acquire all these various territories. By the logic of self-determination being used to justify giving territory from Ukraine to Russia, France, Spain, and Argentina should now give their territory to the United States. So I have to wonder how many people in favor of giving territory from Ukraine to Russia will support the same position if the territory were being lost by their own nation and taken by the USA. Now let's change the analogy. Imagine the following situation in the United States. A bunch of immigrants from Mexico come across the southern border into Arizona. A large portion of Arizona is now suddenly filled with Mexican immigrants, and they generally congregate in a few specific territories. The Mexican immigrants don't like that the USA is not as Mexican as Mexico and would prefer the land they now occupy become part of Mexico. Will they be able to vote to give large portions of Arizona from the United States to Mexico simply because they happen to live there? Should they even have that ability? Well, first off, do you think the United States would allow that to happen? Could any leader in the current American political structure allow that without looking extremely weak? Would Russia give up territory so easily to, say, Japan, for example? If this was an acceptable practice, then it basically mean I can create an emigration policy to encourage people to go to various territories that I want, and then just take the land from other nations over the course of a few years. It's a profound level of self-entitlement that you can go to a country, congregate in one spot because of your own cultural preferences, and then demand that territory be given to you, rather than have responsibilities as a member of the society you've decided to move into, or over the course of a generation or two, decided to put your children into. And how might nations need to change their immigration and border policies to prevent ethnic populations showing up and congregating in one spot or another and seizing large chunks of territory if this became common and accepted? Now comes the expected counter-argument. But Ukraine's government isn't elected. That makes it okay for a foreign power to seize territory if the local population votes in favor. Really, so if I become the President of the United States and entice some territories and other nations that I don't consider legitimate governments to want to be annexed by the USA, it's okay for me to expand my territory that way. Are you sure you want to agree to that? Have you considered all the ways the USA can exploit this? Furthermore, if the rules don't apply to a government because the government isn't considered legitimate, can't I just bypass voting altogether and take what I want by force? Now let's leave that side alone for a moment. On to the side supporting Ukraine. So what I'm told is that the current Ukrainian government took power via coup, and most of the people who have made the recently mentioned observations are either in favor of Ukraine keeping its territory, against Russia taking the territory, or some similar position. If what I'm told is true, and the current Ukrainian government was backed by foreign powers such as the USA, it would make sense that a good number of people don't want to live under the current Ukrainian government, nor would they want to leave the areas they've made their homes, and indeed, why should they? That being a reason why they'd want to either become an autonomous entity or join another larger entity, in this case Russia. 
If you live under a governing body that you think isn't legitimate, or the power is otherwise behaving in a manner you think it shouldn't, secession isn't inherently bad, after all. The USA started out that way, and incidents of either secession for independence or revolution happen rather frequently. Though over here in the USA, we label them noble freedom fighters whenever it suits our corporation's political and financial interests. I don't think I need to explain the points against Ukraine's government much more than that. And in fact, if you are a frequent viewer of my political videos, you probably could have deduced the issues with both sides fairly easily. But why are these arguments, then, still so common? You and I might understand that, but the people don't understand that. The average Joe doesn't know. So why? Let's get to the real issue. Why are so many people taking sides, either for Ukraine and against Russia, or for Russia and against Ukraine? Because it brings comfort to do so. People will be more inclined to believe what makes them happy. They make up stuff that makes them feel better, including seeing good guys and bad guys that aren't necessarily real. What higher power came down from the heavens and signed a contract promising there would in fact be a good guy in the Crimea situation? None. Yet people feel entitled to there actually being a good guy in this situation, as if self-entitlement can create a good guy. People that don't like Russia or don't like Vladimir Putin are attributing bonus morality points to the current Ukrainian government. So they can view this as an attempt by Russia to seize territory and view the Ukrainian government as the good guys. And people that don't like the Ukrainian government are trying to find a reason to call the Russian government liberators and say that they're the good guys. It doesn't make people feel good to see both sides in a confrontation as malevolent, because that means the correct stance would be more complicated and require more effort to understand. And it doesn't necessarily paint the picture that everything's going to work out for the best as long as you believe it will. To truly understand the situation in Crimea as it is now, one would need a good understanding of how the region developed and what its history is between Russia and Ukraine, how the current population came there, and how it came to seemingly favor secession. Knowledge of Ukraine and Russia and the relationship between both nations. Knowledge about the current Ukrainian government and several other factors. You would also need to obtain information regarding what the consequences of the various ways this situation could play out would be. That requires hypothesizing multiple potential outcomes, many of which will need to assume that both parties are power-seeking entities, as that is the case more often than people would like to believe. Doing this requires time, effort, patience, and in the vast majority of situations, rapidly destroys the view that any involved party can be fully classified as good, which is why most people don't want to do that. It is, after all, so much easier to give oneself a pat on the back and say, you're a good person, and feel entitled, intelligent, warm and fuzzy, than it is to invest vastly more time and effort only to be rewarded with headaches, stress, and cynicism. You could perhaps examine all the factors I just listed, and come to a conclusion that it'd be better if one or the other power obtained a victory here. But neither can be presumed to be acting without personal gain as an interest. That's a delusion for the sheep, and if you're this far into the video, it's probably not a delusion for you. I could go on a great deal about the specifics of the situation in Crimea, but I'd rather go get a cupcake. Maybe I'll make another video on the subject if I believe it's well-liked enough to merit further investment of my time. For now, though, the message I leave you with isn't to tell you to support either side. It's to remind people not to judge situations by the first YouTube video they see or the first news report they hear. It's to remind people that, in this world, there isn't always a good guy in a confrontation. I live in hope that one day you'll come to see this universe for what it truly is rather than what you'd wish it to be. And I shall endeavor to become more cynical with each passing day. Look gift horses squarely in the mouth and find clouds in every silver lining. If only you meant it. Anyway, for those of you who didn't unsubscribe and rush under your bed to curl up into fetal position and eat tub after tub of ice cream, stand by for Titanfall. Also, rate this video 5 out of 5 meow meow beans, because that's totally a thing now, apparently. I'll see you next time, if we haven't devolved into a post-apocalyptic dystopia yet. Later, YouTube.